I hope you're all doing good. Today I'm doing another what I eat in a day video here on the channel and the grey has definitely settled in here in Malmö so I'm all about making comfort food at the moment but still sticking to adding lots of veggie goodness in there uh, as you know I like to do. And uh, for breakfast I thought I'd try something new but before I get into that I want to thank glassesusa.com for sponsoring this video and tell you a little bit about them. So by cutting out the middleman glassesusa.com offers over 10,000 prescription glasses and sunglasses including in house brands like Muse and designer brands like Ray-Ban, Oakley, Gucci and many more at up to 70% off retail prices. So maybe you guys don't know this about me because I often wear contact lenses but I am extremely nearsighted. Rob laughs at me almost every day for this and um, using glassesusa.com is actually the first time for me shopping for glasses online. I've been really pleasantly surprised. I was a little bit worried that not trying on the glasses in real life would cause some trouble but I was able to upload a photo in the online shop and see what each frame would look like on my face using their virtual try-on tool. There's also information of the size of each frame in inches or centimeters which is great for comparing with the glasses you already have and there's also a quiz on the side which helps you determine what frames would suit you and your face shape if you're finding it tricky sifting through the choices on your own. My glasses arrived in about a week after ordering them which I think is really great and I got two pairs of prescription glasses. The first ones are these Muse Matisse frames. They have this soft yellow toned clear color around the glass and then a tortoise shell arm and I think these are really fun and they're definitely something different than new for me. The second frame I got is called the Revel Sidestep and they're more toned down in a matte brown and they are more the style that I would normally go for which made them a really safe bet and in addition to offering glasses you can also order contact lenses on glassesusa.com. They also offer free shipping and returns and a 14 day money back guarantee so you don't have to take any financial risks at your end. So if you're interested in getting some new specs or contact lenses I will leave glassesusa.com's website down below if you want to check them out. But now let's get to cooking and all that I will eat today. And for breakfast I want to make these Korean style vegetable pancakes. And normally they would have wheat flour but since I'm sensitive to gluten I'm going to swap that out for chickpea flour. I have done this before in other recipes and it usually works quite well. So finger crossed it works now as well. And yeah, that's it. Let's get to cooking. It's my understanding that you can use different types of vegetables for this pancake and I went for carrot, zucchini or courgette, spring onions and some cabbage. I really wanted to use sweet potato which I would have grated to add to the mixture but for some reason we ate it the night before not thinking that we were going to use it for this recipe. What I did try to do is cut the different vegetables in a size that would cook pretty much evenly. So I'm making sure that denser vegetables were cut pretty finely. For the batter itself, I combined chickpea flour or gram flour as it's also called, some potato starch, a little bit of turmeric for color and salt with water. I didn't get the ratios of batter to vegetables right at the get-go, but I will link the recipe I used as an inspiration in the description box below so that you can try it if you want to. And I just simply swapped the wheat flour for chickpea flour in that recipe. Another recommendation if you're making these pancakes at home is to use a non-stick pan. I tried our carbon steel pan first which has been well seasoned so it should be non-stick but the pancake still stuck a little bit and it was much easier to flip the pancake on the non-stick pan as you can see here. I did still use some oil just to get that nice color and crisp on the outside though. Mm. 
I also prepared a dipping sauce for the pancakes by combining some soy sauce with rice vinegar, some toasted sesame oil and maple syrup. To these liquids I also added some toasted sesame seeds. I think I added a little bit too much but it was still yummy. And all you need to do is just stir that together and then you can dip your pancake right in there. If you like a little bit of spice you could add some chili flakes to that dipping sauce as well. And of course you could use Korean red pepper flakes or gochugaru or you could use regular chili flakes or some sriracha sauce, whatever you like. lunch time and I'm going to make a soup which is very much in character for me. Normally I like to make big batches though for dinner and have leftovers for lunches but since we're filming I wanted to cook it so you can see and I'm going to use this vegetable. Uh, I think a lot of people find this a little scary looking. It's a celeriac or a celery root in Swedish it's called rot celery. Um, and yeah, it has a bit of a celery flavor, but it's very much a root vegetable and has that rooty, earthy goodness to it. And yeah, you have to cut off all these cruddy bits and then cube it up and cook it. And I'm gonna cook it with some leek and some onion and some vegan cream and it's gonna be creamy and yummy. And uh, yeah, let's just get started. <laughs> I'm always quite vigilant when I clean my celeriac because I really don't like that crunch you get from eating little bits of dirt and um, it can easily get in the crevices of celeriac. But uh, once you slice it, which I'm doing here to cut the celeriac into smaller pieces, you can also remove extra dirt that might be in deeper crevices, um, which is easier to do once you've cut the celeriac into smaller pieces. Anyways, to make the soup, I cut the celeriac into cubes so that they cook faster. And then I also chop up some leek as well as some onion and garlic to add lots of good flavor in the base of the soup. When cooking the soup, I like to saute the leek, onion and garlic in a little bit of oil before I add the celeriac and the water. And this is just to get it a little bit browned and bring all the flavors out from the veggies. Finally, when I think there's a good color on the leek and the onion, I go in with the celeriac cubes as well as some water. And then I also add in some vegan cream. This one's oat based. And I season that up with some stock powder, vegetable stock powder, as well as the seasoning made with sage, garlic and lemon. I really like these kind of spice blends for soups and stews because they've already combined yummy flavors so you don't need to think so much yourself but of course you could just go with separate spices pretty much any dried herb would taste good in there. 
Then I just leave the soup to simmer for about 20 to 30 minutes until it's all softened. And in the meantime, I decided to make some kale chips. I haven't done this for a long time and I don't know why because it's really delicious. I feel like for a while this was all the rage and everyone was eating kale chips all the time for any occasion. Um, and I think maybe we should bring that back. So if you've never tried this, please do. What I do is that I take the leaf off the stem of the kale and I clean it and pat it dry. And then I go in with some olive oil and some soy sauce as well as some black pepper. I toss that to coat and then I spread the kale out on a sheet pan. And I bake this in the oven at 175 degrees for about 10 minutes, sometimes 15, sometimes Sometimes shorter. Just keep an eye on them and make sure to flip them at one stage and uh, be vigilant so they don't burn. Once the celeriac is softened, I go in with one can of drained and rinsed butter beans to add a little bit more body and protein to the soup. And then I like to blitz this. I did this with a stick blender here, but I think it would have been better to put it through the high speed blender to make it really, really smooth. I think that would have been more delicious. But um, either way, this is a yummy, creamy soup. Perfect for chilly autumn and winter weather. To dress each bowl, I drizzled with a little bit of extra virgin olive oil over the top and then topped it off with some of those kale chips. But you need to eat them fast so they don't go soggy. And uh, yeah, I made more so I could have them on the side as well. I pretty much always eat soups with bread on the side just to make it more filling, especially when I make these smooth blended soups. Here I've got some oat based gluten-free bread that's really good if you're in Sweden. You can find it in the freezer section of pretty much any large supermarket. In the afternoons between lunch and dinner I always like a snack and at the moment I'm still on my Earl Grey kick. I love a good Earl Grey and I drink it with oat milk. I know some people don't like milk in Earl Grey but I do and I also had a pear just to tide me over. So we're gonna make some dinner now and uh, we're gonna make a stir fry. It's something that we do quite often in our household and it's good because it's pretty quick and easy, at least I think so. Maybe some of you think the chopping and prepping uh, takes too long, but uh, then you could always buy pre-chopped veggies if you're so inclined. I have cleaned some Brussels sprouts that I thought we'd use in ours and uh, they're in season now which is great and they actually go really well in stir fries and I'm also putting on some rice but I thought I'd show you a fun way of making rice a little bit more interesting so I'm going to mix some brown rice with a little bit of black rice which actually makes the rice altogether a little bit purple if I get the ratios right and I'm also going to be adding some quinoa in there to add more nutrients, interest, flavor. And yeah, that's a fun way of switching up your rice. And you could of course use other grains in there as well. This is just a combo that I really like. So uh, once that is on, I'm going to start prepping the veggies, frying them off. And I'm also going to cook some tofu. I'm just gonna fry this up. And this is a quick, an easy hack is to buy the um, pre-marinated tofu. This one's herb marinated and it's not a very a sort of Asian style flavor, but I don't really mind. I just think this one's really good. So that's the one I'm going to use. And uh, yeah, let's go. Once I had sliced my Brussels sprouts into halves or quarters, I chopped up some other veggies that I think go really well in a stir fry. And something I really like about stir fries is that you can use up 
any sort of stumps of veggies you have lying around from other dishes. So here is a piece of zucchini or crochette that I used in my breakfast pancake that I didn't finish and it will make a great addition to this dish instead. I'm also using some spring onion as well as some chestnut mushrooms and some pak choy. These last two are some of my favorite veggies to put in stir fries, especially pak choy has such a nice crunch and I love adding greens to my meals as well. To add some good flavor to the stir fry, I'm also slicing up some garlic as well as some ginger. Of course, you could go in with fresh chili here or you could add some chili sauce later if you like it a bit spicy. definitely no expert stir fryer and I always use a pan that's too small for the amount of veggies that I'm cooking. I do like to think about at which point I should add each vegetable. So it's important to start with the vegetable that's going to take the longest to cook so that by the end everything is cooked to perfection or at least as close as you can get. So here you can see me putting in the veggies at different stages just making sure that everything gets cooked but nothing preferably gets overcooked. Of course you should always finish with the thing that takes the least time and that's why I've cut my pak choy into leafy part and more fibrous part so that I can add just the leafy parts at the end. Then to finish off I like to add some soy sauce as well as this vegetarian stir fry sauce that I think is meant to be a little bit like oyster sauce is from the healthy boy brand I really like it so I always just stir that through and at this point you could also add the chili sauce if you wanted. Then I serve up my rice which you can see actually turned out nice and purple and then top that with the stir fried veggies and my fried tofu. I also like to garnish with a little bit of fresh coriander just to add a little bit of interest on the top. So that's my stir fry dinner. I always manage to overcrowd the pan when I make stir fries. I add too many veggies in there and they come out more steamed than stir fried, but I don't really mind. I think we need to get ourselves a really good wok pan actually so we can do it properly. Um, but yeah, this is it. I also um, wanted to say about the ratios with the rice. I think I managed to get that perfect purple rice and I used a half a cup of brown rice and then in the half cup measurement I put two thirds of quinoa and one third of uh, black rice and it turned out beautiful if I may say so myself. So yeah, now I'm gonna enjoy this and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out glassesusa.com in the link in the description box. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care everyone, bye.